Any nice cooking pancakes? I will try the chocolate thing with it. And I try jam. In our beach house, thanks to the international community here, we have American pancakes every morning with some fresh pastries. Do you try it with jam? Yeah. What a nice bread! Really tender. And this and this still normal. Yeah. Check it out, camera. And arriving to the city, we taste fish soup or vegetable soup with one of the local beers. It's a it's a bean soup. Yeah. Green bean soup. After trying local tasties, we also find unique local vehicles on the streets. Besides the classic yellow tram, there are such red ones too. These old lines are operated by another transport provider. They are the local hop on hop of trams which we can take with special tickets. One of the stations is right here at the Commerce Square, which has the arch of the Augusta Street on its side, and the statue of King Jose I is on the middle, in the direction of the river. This arch connects the pedestrian street coming from the Rossio Square with the square by the river. The street has a very special pavement with these black and white cubes, and we find shops and restaurants on both sides, and of course some weird showmen in the middle, like this Indian. Very authentic face. Yeah, he wanted to show up this way. On the next corner we find the famous Santa Giusta elevator, which leads to the Carnot Square above. When we walk back to the arch, we can see my favorite location in downtown Lisbon, which is the Riverside. First we get to the Commerce Square again with the horse statue on it, and finally there is only one cross left in our way. On the riverside we can have a break sitting on the stone seats, while we can see the 25th of April bridge, which is 2 kilometers long and 70 meters high above the river. When the water level is such low, we can take the stairs to the sand and directly to the riverside. These times we can see the bigger stones and smaller rocks on the bottom, which are hidden under the water on the other days. Then we can have a snack by the river sitting on the long stairs before we continue our trip. We decided to discover the famous funiculars on the hillsides, then look around on some less frequented streets. That is that street, look. But there are no trams on it. But they are waiting for something. After a little uncertainty we find out that a funicular called Elevador da Bica is nearby, so we go that way. But unexpectedly we meet a local guy sitting on the street. And then we find steep rails around the middle of the funicular line. Maybe we should go down if you want to travel on it, because as you see it has no stops here. They are only at the bottom and the top. With its 245 meters length, this is the second longest funicular in the city with a 12 degrees ramp. Even the street itself gives a lot of inspiration to photographers. And why should we miss taking a selfie? Approaching the station we can see one of the carriages with lots of graffiti. Then we walk to the entrance and get on board of the nice, clean yellow pair of it. Let's sit in the front. Here. Here? Yeah. yeah.
The funicular has so-called passive carriages, which means that they are moved by a cable running in one of the rails down there. And the two carriages are moving up and down at the same time. They only need electricity for the lights inside and outside and further appliances, not for moving the carriages. As you can see they have a small lamp which lights on the go. Taking a tram at the upper station of the funicular, we can get back to the Augusta Street and even more to the oldest part of Lisbon called Alfama District. In this small street near the river, we find a building called House of the Spikes. This house you see in front of me looks like a simple house with such a normal wall with an average checkered pattern. But when I'm going closer, you can see that actually there are small pyramids on it everywhere, extending in three dimensions on the wall. I hope this way, right here, you can see it much better. That these cubes are actually small pyramids. And besides this Renaissance palace, we find further interesting houses in this district covered with tiles. For instance, right there on our left, with many bluish tiles. Are we going up there? Because I am very curious. I can't wait to see what's on the top. And that's how we make it. In the next episode we go deeper in Alfama district, up to the castle and to the highest point of the city. If you don't want to miss anything, subscribe to my YouTube channel and join us next time.